Hey guys, Razor back again with another video, and this time I'm going to be giving my full comprehensive review for Ganyu, the newest 5 star out currently in, on Genshin 1.2 or January 2021. You guys really enjoyed my Albedo video last time, and I'll do my best to thoroughly but concisely explain how Ganyu works and various other strategies to make her as best as possible for your team. Also, I just want to thank you guys again for your support. It really means a lot for me, and I hope to keep delivering the quality content for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this guide, uh, leaving a like, a, a funny comment, and a hitting that subscribe button, and maybe hitting the notification bell icon would really help me out uh, for the algorithm in terms of delivering quality content for you guys. So going back into the video, in the video, I'll be just thoroughly explaining Ganyu by talking about her stats, her talents, weapon choices, artifact choices, constellations, and some teammates, and then finally concluding with my some final thoughts. Uh, just as quick disclaimer, while my current Ganyu is C0, uh, my Amos bow that I have equipped on her in the gameplay footage is in fact a refinement level 5, which offers a 25% more damage bonus than a R1 copy. I just want to let you guys know up front, however, the content of my guide should hopefully remain the same. And just one final thing, I know this guide is going to be fairly long. So if you want to skip to a particular section, feel free to use the timestamps located in the video or the chapter uh, feature on YouTube so you can find exactly what part you're looking for for Ganyu in particular. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Going into Ganyu's stats, she has an insanely high base attack value, which is actually the same as Deluxe. However, due to being an archer, she has rather low HP in defense. Actually, she has one of the worst, if not the worst base HP out of any of the five stars currently in the game. So don't expect for her to be a tank by any means. Her ascension stat is crit damage, in which she'll gain around 40% extra crit damage compared to the average unit, which will help her deal a lot more damage. While it is not an elemental bonus, the passive and a possible weapon such as the Amos can easily make up for the loss and the damage modifier value. Moving on to Ganyu's talents, Ganyu's normal attack consists of 6 shots with her bow. 99% of the time, you will probably never use this. However, her charge shot consists of 2 levels. The first is just like any other archer, but the second allows her to shoot a frost flake arrow. When the Frost Flake arrow hits a target, it will explode into a bloom which can hit enemies. Keep in mind that this arrow does not have to even hit the enemy at all. It could hit the ground or a tree or whatever solid object you can look at, even the water. The modifier on this bloom is insanely high, which is very similar to an elemental skill. This is mainly how you'll do your damage as a DPS Ganyu. Keep in mind that shielded enemies can be really tricky to fight against and that the only way to hit past a miniature shield is to hit it while it's trying to attack you, whether it's them rushing towards you directly or them trying to hit you like a baseball bat. And one thing I wanted to note here, especially if you plan to use a melt team, is that Pyro and Decryo can actually melt twice. Not going into the specific details, since that would take too long. However, if we do hit, say, 500 likes on this video, I will do my best to explain the elemental reaction system, since it's sort of complicated and hard to understand at first, but will really allow you to understand how to deal more damage and take advantage of elemental reactions in your gameplay. So, I have for you guys a quick demo, so to show you what kind of, uh, what I mean by melting twice on the Frost Lake Arrow in the Bloom in the clip. So as you can see, when my attack hits without critting uh, on North Adam Melt, I do 332 on the arrow and 565 damage, respectively. However, in the following example in which I do a double melt, as you can see, I, I hit the pyro with Kali just to pi create a pyro aura. And when I hit my Ganyu ar arrow, you'll see that I'm hitting 498 and 848 respectively. If you do the math, if you do 848 divided by 565, and if you do 498 divided by 332, you'll pretty much get 1.5 exactly. So this proves that both of these reactions actually, both of these damage on the, on the melts actually melted correctly. And the only reason I'm saying this is that, uh, Sorry, the only reason for this is that my arrow and its bloom melted the target. I just wanted to let you guys know, since there seems to be an ongoing stigma going around, uh, saying that reverse melt or vaporize is just much worse compared to the actual melt and vaporize. And I'm just showing you that this can actually make Ganyu theoretically out DPS normal melt and vaporize teams. So moving on to Ganyu's elemental skill, she first deals cryo damage in an AoE, 
and then leaves behind a cryo blossom or frost blossom, I think, which taunts enemies. And when it expires or its durability reaches zero, it will explode, dealing cryo damage again to surrounding enemies. So going into the value that this skill provides, it does damage twice so that the modifier is actually being done two times on the skill. So don't be fooled by the low values. Also, it will generate particles twice, once on the start of the skill and another time when you deal the damage when it explodes, which can help Ganyu generate much more energy to get back into a burst. You can also use this skill to keep enemies off of you, since Ganyu is very weak defensive-wise, or you can even use it to possibly aggro shield enemies, which could allow you to get an extra shot in, because like I said in the auto attack, it's really hard to hit those enemies normally. With Ganyu. So moving on to Ganyu's elemental burst, it will create an AoE which will constantly rain down ice shards toward enemies over a duration of 15 seconds, which also has a cooldown of 15 seconds. So if you can get enough energy, you can consistently spam this skill for more damage. I'm sure most people know that Ganyu's burst targeting is indeed not random. It actually is very similar to Albedo's in that Ganyu's bursts consist of several volleys. And within each volley, it will try to hit one shard per enemy for up to six enemies. And if there aren't enough enemies within the burst field, it will then randomly pick targets within the field in which the icicles will fall on. This means if you can condense the enemies in one place, similar to Albedo, you can stack the damage really quickly towards your enemies and sort of like a quadratic fight and squared damage, if I recall correctly. So moving on to Ganyu's first passive, it will allow you to give a 20% crit rate on Frostflake arrows and the resulting blooms after the one Frostflake arrow is fired for six seconds. So this basically encourages you, especially as a DPS Ganyu, to spam frost like arrows for those increased crits and allows you to invest more into crit damage without having to worry too much about the rate. Especially if you have a Cryo Resonance on your team or a four piece Cryo set or even both. Moving on to Ganyu's second passive, this gives you a 20% crowd damage bonus to all active party members within the field created by her burst, including herself that can just deal overall more damage, especially on crowd characters, such as Ayaka if you plan to roll for her. And finally, going into Ganyu's overworld passive, it's just not that important, really, as all it does is just save you on some ore should you craft a bow. And moving on to, in terms of skill leveling, you should be focusing most of your efforts on getting Ganyu's uh, auto attack or first skill as high as you can, and then work on her burst and finally her elemental skill. And this is if you're building her as a DPS. If you're focusing more on a sub DPS or a supportive role, then I would suggest you level the burst first and then the auto attack and then the skill. So moving on to weapons is where I will slightly diverge into two paths and which you'll have on the first path, you'll have the main DPS route and on the second path, we'll have the sub DPS or support path. So starting off with the DPS path, we have the best DPS bow in my opinion, which is the Amos's bow. And I cannot express how good this weapon is for Ganyu. So essentially what it does first is that it allows you to just simply do more damage on your normal and charge attacks. And this just increases your damage modifier, which she sort of lacked because she didn't have a crowd damage bonus as her ascension stat. And that was that. That's still not. That's not even the good one. The that, but it's still really good. Don't get me wrong. But the real effect is the second effect. And what it does is that for each 0.1 seconds that the arrow is in flight for up to 0.5 seconds or five times, it deals additional damage. And the reason that it is so good is that there is a delay between the frost flake arrow hitting a target and the bloom and this delay actually counts towards the extra damage of this effect so the frost flake and its bloom are actually both treated as charge attacks so this effect magnifies your bloom damage since the delay is around 0.3 seconds and this will also come uh this that the frost flake arrow and its bloom well as a charge attack will come important later especially when it comes to artifacts when it comes to the wanderer set just keep that in mind and the substat of the Amos' bow is just really good too. With the attack, it's fairly solid. It's not like crit rate or crit damage, but it's still really good. And so moving on to the best, uh, the second best weapon for a DPS build, we have the Skyward Harp. It's just overall 
probably the best weapon in the game right now. It's just a super solid weapon with a good crit rate and crit a good crit damage on it, as well as having a high base attack on it. It's just overall the best weapon, but in Ganyu's case, the Amos' bow definitely comes out on top over the Skyward Harp in this case. And for the four-star weapons, we have the BP bow and the Black Cliff bow. I don't have them on my account because I've been somewhat lazy, uh, but... In terms of which one is better than the other, they're both about clo fairly close in each other's value. But I think I would have to value the Black Cliff Bow more, simply being that it crit rate is not really too important on Ganyu, especially if you have a four-piece cryo or run a cryo resonance and a freeze team. So, but the effect of the Battle Pass weapon is still, though, really nice because it sucks enemies into one spot, which allows you to group them easier for getting off your Frost Flake arrows and your blooms. And the next weapon I would recommend past those two weapons is the Prototype Crescent. Since uh, the reason why it's lower than the Battle Pass Bow and the Black Cliff is that uh, hitting a weak spot can sort of be kind of annoying. And the attack boost is really good, but it can be hard to repeatedly do this, especially when it comes to a crowded situation. And another reason, uh, let's be honest, getting a Prototype Bow uh, from a weekly boss is pretty much insanely difficult especially getting what you want so getting refinement on it it's going to be really hard as compared to the battle pass weapon which is like go through five patches updates or the black cliff which you can get done in two months if you have enough glitter so moving on to our support or sub dps build we have three main options which consist of the skyward harp uh the stringless and the favonius warbow and so going into the skyward harp this uh, just simply allows us to crit more often and harder, and especially when it comes to our burst. And the and the re and talking about the stringless, so the stringless offers a ton of value, especially when it comes to melt teams. Should you decide to run her as a possible melt support with someone like Klee, which can repeatedly hit the pyro. And finally, we have the Favonius Warbow, which will allow us to better spam out our bursts. For some, for something like a superconduct team, which would be really good for someone like Razor, and when it sort of depends on where you want to use Ganyu for these three weapons. So I wouldn't say that any weapon is better than the other in this case. It just depends on how you want to place her on a team. Uh, I didn't include the sacrificial bow uh, mainly, so, but it's a really solid bow. But it just gets outclassed by the Favonius, especially when it comes to a supportive role. But if you don't have any of the three options available to Ganyu, and, but have this bow, it's still a... Feel free to run it. It's just still a really good bow. You'll still get value, and it works pretty well getting a two taunts and just some good energy. But it's not really as good as the Favonius when it comes to generating energy because the Favonius generates neutral particles, while the Favonius will generate cryo particles for your team. So... Moving on to the weapons. Now we finished talking about weapons. Let's move on to talking about artifacts. All right, guys. So going into artifact builds for Ganyu, I'm first going to start out as the main DPS route. And then after I finish the main DPS, I'll go into the support route. So for the, for the main DPS route uh, set, just a quick disclaimer, um, it's, it's okay to go offset. Uh, just keep in mind that main stats and substats on your artifacts are like the most important thing. So if you're going offset, don't worry about it. For the time being, just run stuff that's good for her that's offset, and then until you're able to farm good stuff, and then you can run off on set. So just keep that in mind, especially when it comes to building characters. So don't sacrifice stats just because it's on set, because set actually sometimes provides like the least value overall to a character. So without for, uh, that out of the way, so for sets for a DPS Ganyu, currently as of January 2021, I would actually recommend her best set is pretty much a four-piece cryo set for the increased crit rate. Pretty much you'll have to, if you have crit rate, uh, if you have the four-piece cryo set, if you have cryo resonance and you have her first passive, you pretty much won't even have to worry about crit rate to begin with. You could have like 20% and that'll actually be more than enough what you need. Uh, however, if you want to go down a more of a melt DPS route, should a pyro support that's better than Sean Ling come out because she's not very good in my opinion, because Guoba kind of sucks, um, you can run a four-piece wanders, and that would be really good for that melt comp in particular. And you can any sort of hybrid is also pretty good. So you can run like two-piece glad, two-piece cryo. You can run two-piece wanders, two-piece cryo. If you're running like a hybrid, because wanders is sort of hard to get because if there's only drop off elite bosses and weeklies and abyss runs uh, every two weeks, which can be kind of annoying to get. And or two-piece cryo, two-piece glad. You can kind of experiment with different two-piece sets. 
uh, that that kind of work towards what you want. And so those were the sets. So going into main stats, uh, for the hat, crit damage is pretty much always the case. Uh, especially, unless you're running like a... Uh, like a uh, melt, sorry. Like a running like a melt comp in which you you might want to have more rate because obviously enemies aren't going to be affected by cryo. You really can't take advantage of cryo damage bonus. I'm oh, sorry, cryo resonance. And it's kind of more awkward to work with. So you really want to have crit rate, especially as a... Uh, to just get that more damage uh since they're since they're more a little bit unreliable so probably around 50 percent crit rate overall in ganyu so you can take advantage of that so you may want to run a crit rate hat to make up for it however if you're running the freeze build you really don't have to worry about this in fact you'll have plenty of crit rate so running a crit damage hat pretty much almost always in those comps would be good for you can you to cut pretty much almost always crowd damage bonus is what you're looking looking for enough said if you don't have crowd damage bonus attack is fine just when you get a crowd damage bonus just feel free to use that one instead pop it off it's what you'll be looking for um and on the hourglass i'm actually running an er piece because i'm running almost as bow i need some er especially if I want to spam into burst often which is really really good uh and i don't need extra attack percent however if you are uh but i don't think you should pretty much in every case you should be running an er piece because it's just that good but attack percent is not that bad either because er pieces are are uh, statistically harder to get and it comes to artifact farming, then attack percent. So if you have a good energy recharge piece, it's the best in my opinion. However, attack percent is still good. So if you're running like a black cliff bow though, or another weapon that's not Amos or the Prescent, uh, Percent Crescent, you can run attack percent. And that it may actually be better. It depends on your ER, but you still want to have good ER when it comes to substats on her. So you can take advantage of her burst, which will give her more damage modifier anyway, which is what which is really nice. So, uh, Feather and Flower, again, those are static. Those will be static. And so, moving on to substats for a DPS Ganyu, uh, crit damage is probably the number one uh, option. And then crit rate followed after, uh, especially if you're running the Melt comp, the crit rate is kind of more important for you. If you're more, uh, otherwise, it's not too important if you're running the Freeze comp or a just a Cryo comp in general. And after that, attack percent, uh, ER, sorry, ER, then attack percent. ER is really good on her. Uh, attack percent, then EM, especially if you're running melt. The EM is just, it would be solid. But then again, other units can provide you with EM. So it's not necessarily too important. So that was sort of the uh, the DPS build. It kind of built her very similarly to most DPSs in this game. So it shouldn't be too hard if, you, if you've built a DPS character before. So moving on to the support build, so for the support build, two sets, the two set builds I would recommend are either the four-piece noblesse or a two-piece crowd, two-piece noblesse. You can kind of work with whatever one works best for you. I think both are really good for different reasons. One uh, just doesn't really care about her damage, just care about buffing the team, more of a support. And the other one is more of a sub-DPS route where you want gone, you can just do some stills, do some very solid damage with these icicles that are dropping down from the sky and hitting enemies. So... For, for a support build, crit rate or crit damage again, it kind of depends if you have crowd resonance already for a character like Ayaka, if you want to run her. However, if you're running like a more of a melt, like melt, uh, running her as like a melt support for someone like Klee, uh, running a crit rate on hat just to get more damage out of those icicles is going to be way more important than the crit damage because you really won't be able to take advantage of any of the crit uh, rate bonuses that Ganyu provides, especially from crowd set. So definitely crit rate. I would recommend for a support slash sub DPS build. Uh, again, very same cryo damage bonus. You really can't go wrong. At attack percent if you don't have cryo damage bonus for a support build. And then time piece, pretty much if you don't have an energy recharge bow for support sub DPS build for her, then put on energy recharge. Else you can put an attack percent. It still worked exactly the same. And then for your sub stats, mainly what you're looking for is more ER, uh, crit damage, crit rate, attack, and then some, and, and EM is not bad either. So that's pretty much like... It's kind of similar to a DPS route, but it's a little bit different. So mainly how the sets work. So those were the artifacts. And now time to talk about the most whale section of this video, which will be talking about her constellations. So going into Ganyu's constellations, as you can see, I don't have any of them unlocked. I just did this for the sake of demonstration. And to show you guys, I'm not going to play into C6 so I can show the character fairly and evaluate them fairly without constellations, especially since I know that most people in the video uh, Re uh, are reasonably told me yes you probably shouldn't run constellations on her and it's exactly what i did i did get the stella fortunas on her which i will do at a later date but i just want to tell you how these constellations work so you guys can understand whether or not you should pull for them or not in my opinions on these constellations so ganyu's first constellation 
is whenever she does a charge attack, or her, her, sorry, her frost flake arrow and the bloom, when it hits an enemy or enemies, it will decrease their crowd resistance by 15% for six seconds. And on top of that, it, each arrow or the bloom will when it generate two energy for Ganyu, and it can only happen once per arrow or bloom. So it's just generate helps her generate more energy and it helps her do more damage. And this is arguably her best constellation because reducing res is very valuable and pretty much you'll spam arrows anyway for DPS Ganyu. So this will allow you to just do way more damage around like 10% more damage. And on top of that, be able to spam in your burst, which is really important for Ganyu for that extra damage uh, bonus should uh, if you want to use that passive correctly. So arguably her best constellation stopping here would be really really good it, you don't need to go any further but however i will discuss the further constellation so constellation level two is she just got an extra charge on her taunt ability which allows her to a do more damage and b generate more energy so it just allows her again to just provide more value ult faster deal more damage yada 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 that sort of thing so constellation level three increases her burst by level by three levels up to maximum 15 just her burst is really really good uh the cost of 60 so it just allows her to just smack people hard harder constellation level four so this is kind of a bit doozy but let me try to explain this to the best of my ability so um when enemies stand within the burst field they will take increased damage and it gets better over time so it starts at five percent and every three seconds this continues another five percent for a max of 25 percent and it lingers for three seconds after they leave the field so in essence, this is actually added, this modifier is actually added on to your crowd damage bonus or your charge attack bonus. So it's not as good as what it claims to be. And the amount of time it'll take you to get 15 seconds in, in the field, an enemy, entire enemy, especially someone like a miniature or big boy uh, enemy, such as a fat fat tweet guy, it's, or a uh, the electro hammer guy. It, they're, they usually run out so unless you can keep them stuck in with like a freeze so this really benefits the freeze teams a lot more but it's still a solid constellation but i don't think it's definitely worth going for it's not as good as what, as what people think it is and i just t if you don't need to go get this constellation for ganyu in my opinion it's not that great but it is still good don't get me wrong but it's not as good as, as spending five copies to get her for so hustle level six increases her elemental skill by three levels it's not too fantastic i wouldn't definitely go here and finally, Constellation 6. And this is probably one of the most co overrated constellations I've ever seen. Uh, people overhype this constellation way too much. And essentially what it does is when you use her elemental skill, the next Flash Flake Shock within 30 seconds does not need to be charged. It You can only get it twice. And after that, you have to wait 10 seconds for the next one. And by the time, you'll probably fire two arrows. So it doesn't really increase your DPS by a major amount. And if you somehow miss the entire shot completely, you just lost it. So just keep that in mind. It's not... It's still really good, but it's definitely not worth the hype that people were hyping up this skill. So that was pretty much the constellations. I haven't, as you can see, I still have the C0. So um, now we're going to move on to the, the last part of this video, which will be teammates for Ganyu. So moving on to team builds for Ganyu. So first of all, we're going to talk about my favorite team comp, which is this teaming right here. It's arguably one of the best team comps for Ganyu. So... I mean, let me go explain, break down this team. So this is a DPS Ganyu team and Ganyu would be the main DPS, obviously, followed by Child is actually a somewhat sub DPS. This is somewhat of a whale build, I would say. Um, Constellation 4 on Child is just really good for this build. But however, you don't really need Constellation 4. You don't need it to do really well with this team. The main reason why Child is in this team is that Child, uh, another part reason why is because if you look at Child's uh, passive this increases normal attack uh, the skill level by one and this allows Ganyu to just hit even harder on her auto attack which and also sets up a freeze comp so essentially the biggest problem that Ganyu faces is against shielded enemies it's really hard to hit these enemies with Ganyu especially with her charge shots so having popping her burst and then moving into someone like child that can freeze them and just kill them off really quickly is going to be really really nice and then Ganyu can just kind of finish off the rest of the people so Child is really good. If you don't have Child, you can kind of go Mona, and who still provides a, a, a very good amount of value. Uh, so you can run some at Siller. It's not as good, but Mona is, is, is also a decent option. And finally, Ching Cho is a kind of an okay option. The problem is you'll have to auto attack, which um, so you have to like auto attack charge shot. It's kind of wonky, but it does kind of work. So you can sort of run that as well for as a flex spot. Um, Diona. Uh, if you don't have Diona, you can use like Chi Chi, but ideally you want a crowd unit here so you can get your crowd resonance bonus for 15% crit rate for this team. Uh, 
Dion is just one of the best, if not the best, way better than Chi-Chi because A, she has much better energy regen, which helps Ganyu and her a lot, and her burst also provides solid healing and just overall good character. Passive allows your movement speed increases and her shield is fairly tanky for what it does. So Diona is really good here. If you don't have, and if Tartalia and Diona were on the same banner, so you if you have Tartalia, you should have Diona, hopefully. Uh, but if you don't have Diona, Chi-Chi's okay here as well if you have her. Uh, I'm not sure what I'd put here besides it, so just keep that in mind. And then um, the last spot is kind of like a flat spot. I put Venti in because Venti just offers value on generating more energy for Ganyu and Diona, as well as just grouping enemies together for the Ganyu's elemental burst ability for the icicles, as well as just grouping them together. So when you freeze them with child, you can run, uh, you can just go in, shoot him with Ganyu with the charge shots all at once. And a fun combo I like to use with this team is just, obviously, Venti fires off his burst, Venti OP burst, Kazida, whatever. And then Tartaglia actually, oh, sorry, and then you get Ganyu to pop a one arrow and that fires off the, uh, hopefully absorbs the the burst. And so it absorbs the cryo element and so it'll do more damage to them. Um, and to give energy to Diona and Ganyu at the end of it. And finally, you move on to Tartaglia. And here's the funny part. You actually use Tartaglia's, or Child's, or Tartaglia's uh, Elemental Burst in Bow form. And so it allows Child to basically go back into Burst fairly easily, especially on Abyss when there's a ton of enemies. You can just, like, one-shot a lot of people. Uh, and it's just really, really good. And even then, you can just quickly, like, get off some melee attacks or go into Ga switch back into Ganyu and just shoot off some arrows and pretty much finish off people. It's There's a lot of synergy with this team, and I really like it for the crowd resonance for Excrease Crit, which helps Child get off Riptide slashes, and it's just... It, there's so much good things with this team. I cannot express. This is my favorite team for DPS uh, right now. I'm not really a fan of the Melt build right now, simply because uh, the Bennett... I mean, there's only really Bennett, and Sean Ling is kind of, like, okay. Uh, she has Guoba, and Guoba's, like the crappiest support DPS ever compared to Oz or Jingcho shields, or sorry, Jingcho swords, and I just not really a fan of it. It's just, it, I, I tried it out. It's just really wonky, and it kind of messes things up. Pyronado has, like, that weird spacing issue where you have to be somewhat close, it, it, and it costs 80, which it's, like, kind of hard to get energy for her as well. It's just kind of bad, and I'm sort of waiting until a good Pyro uh, sub-DPS can come out that kind of fixes this. But until then, I'd say the Freeze Comp is just much better, in my opinion, for getting consistent, fast DPS out for Ganyu. And this is my favorite DPS team. And if you guys have your own suggestions uh, or any recommendations that you want me to ask uh, for my opinions, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll be sure to do my best to answer your guys' concerns, and I'll do my best. I, I'm not, I can't guarantee I'll answer all of them, but I'll do my best. So moving on to the support or sub DPS build, one of my favorite builds is actually running this team. So uh, kind of similar to Diona, you can kind of swap off with any healer, or if you don't, you can even use like a Venti here, I guess, or a grouper like Sucrose. That'd be okay too. Uh, but I like just the cryo resonance here. Bennett just extra damage, and then running Ganyu as a burst, uh, it can constantly burst Ganyu into uh, Razor, which will provide us, especially when Razor goes into burst form, he can just get off his, uh, just superconduct over and over and over again, which allows you to get, just deal so much damage with Razors. It's probably one of Razor's favorite builds, uh, and it's just super consistent. And if you're, if you're really good with your energy recharge, on Ganyu, you can actually constantly get it back up, and Razor will have his, will hopefully get his burst back up too, so you can just kind of redo it, the thing thing over and over, get Bennett up, sort of get yourself into like a loop, and that would be sort of my recommendation um, for this team. And another good recommendation, especially for a sub DPS Ganyu, is if we swap out Razor for Klee, and yes, while you won't really have that much control, if you just put like a stringless on Ganyu, it's kind of like mix up for this, the ordering. But keep in mind, like I said, uh, the melt works a little bit differently from Pyro to Cryo, and it's actually it sometimes can be better, and and it's for you, especially for Ganyu has a bunch of EM on her, so ele oh, sorry, elemental mastery. So, and then you can run instead of uh, you can either uh, swap off Bennett or Diona for a Venti for someone that can group people up, and then you can just you know focus on a bunch of people at once. You know that works too. Uh, so I would out of this team, I'd probably swap out Diona. So I'd probably swap out Diona, pop in like a Venti, or if you don't have a Venti, pop in a possible Sucrose. I main Traveler is not really that great since the the problem with the Traveler is that it kind of pushes them outside of the field. 
but this is kind of like the sort of team that I would be uh, building around. But the Razor team is probably the most budget-friendly uh, team. And I uh, and the DPS Ganyu build is sort of like a work in progress. It's just that there really isn't a pyro support for her right now that's like good enough. There's Bennett, and he provides a strong pyro application. But it, still, you have to go back into Bennett. It's kind of wonky and not too fantastic. But... Until that happens, I just don't think that Melt is that as good as the Freeze comp is. So hopefully uh, you guys learn something from these comps. Again, if you have any questions or any recommendations or any thoughts, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. So, and then, uh, so yeah, that, yeah, that will be it for the team comps. And then finally going on to some final conclusions for the character, for, for Ganyu. So Ganyu is an extremely valuable character. She's really good as a DPS and a support. She has a lot of versatility to her kit. And I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy playing her. Um, but I would like... The one thing I'd like to say with my concluding thoughts is that Ganyu is probably not the character for everyone, I'd say. Her style is kind of get used to it. It takes a little while to get adjusted to. And especially if you're on mobile or console, it kind of things get kind of like funky with her. And you, you don't really have to aim at people like Amber, but you can you can aim at the ground. But it's just like kind of slow, and it's it kind of gets kicked used to. So she is really good, just maybe not a character for everyone. And if I had to put her on a tier level, I'd honestly say I'd put her at A tier and not an S tier. She's still really good. Don't A tier is still really good. Don't get me wrong, but it's just that for Ganyu, I don't think she's top tier, but she's still really really good, especially when it comes to freeze teams. And yeah. That's going to be it for this guide. If you guys enjoyed, again, if you guys could leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit notification icon, it would greatly help out my channel, especially when it comes to YouTube's shitty algorithm. And uh, if you guys want to catch me uh, play live on stream, I do stream fairly regularly, regularly on my Twitch channel, which will be linked down below in the description, twitch.tv slash ninjas. And I usually live every morning and evening. If you guys want to check me out, say hi. And yeah, that's going to be it for the guide. Um, I prob And once again, thank you guys so much. We hit around 2.3 thousand subscribers now, which blows my mind. And uh, we're going to do that. I am going to be doing a giveaway, a $100 giveaway. There'll be more at the end of this month. There'll be more details later on, probably next week uh, on how, how I'm going to handle the giveaway. But uh, feel free uh, to uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. So feel free to uh, like, subscribe and that stuff if you want to get started early. And yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. All right, so time to show the, the character demo. So Constellation Zero, still Constellation Zero. Weapon at Refine Five, unfortunately. So without well, that, let's just get going. What's this gonna do? In, we're gonna do an Abyss 12 run. So. You guys want to get closer? Thank you. Wait, where's the other guy? Thank you. There you go. And that was the demo. Probably wasn't the best demo I did. Because the majority of the shield guys I had to use uh, child for. Just for the easiest, for the easy clear. But uh, if you freeze them reliably, you should be able to get a... Uh, hit them with Ganyu a lot more reliably. So hope you guys enjoyed the demo. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.